East Doors, and we're going to focus on on how you know, the Age of Discovery not only affected the American people, the Native Americans, but also Europeans. So there were a number of reasons why Europeans were able to and wanted to explore um, all over. You know, first they they looked to explore India and and Asia and Africa. And eventually they make their way over to America. Mostly the, the first major reason was just to kind of, you know, get, get a, um, you know, the Portuguese and Spanish both wanted to kind of, um, kind of break this monopoly that land traders, Italian land traders had along the Silk Road. So the Portuguese especially were trying to get around Africa and get to India, you know, by, and bypass the land route to the Silk Roads. Uh, new technologies also help fuel this age. Um, you know, explorers like Columbus had ships called caravels, just very, very fast, very durable ships. Um, they borrowed the compass uh, from the Chinese. They borrowed the astrolabe from the Muslims. The astrolabe helps determine um, latitude. The, the compass would, would determine longitude. And they also improved their understanding of winds and currents. Um, they also sought to spread Catholicism. Um, and finally, you know, the wealth and that really drove these men, um, you know, the, 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 the interest in seeking out gold, silver, and spices and other products. So, you know, early on, even Columbus was trying to get to India. You know, he had no idea there was another continent out there. So his goal was to kind of find these products in India, but get there by boat. Um, so... The Age of Discovery might have made Europe richer, but it sure didn't help native populations. And we know that the diseases that were brought to the Americas by the Europeans were catastrophic. And that's the main cause of population loss. Um, it wasn't guns. It wasn't slavery. It was basically European diseases like smallpox. Remember, the natives were, were isolated for centuries, and now all of a sudden they're being exposed to these diseases that they weren't ready for. And the word demography is just means population. So demographically, we're going to see a decrease in native populations. Um, about 90% of tribal populations were lost. And two men that contributed to that were Spanish conquistadors by the name of Fernando Cortez and Francisco Pizarro. All right, so um, the first country we're going to kind of learn about is Portugal. Uh, this is the country that's the first nation to basically explore India and, and, and really access markets in India and Asia by boat. And we give a lot of credit to Prince Henry the Navigator. He was uh, a teacher. He had a, a sailing school, and he taught the Spanish and Portuguese explorers how to you know, sail that caravel and, and, and learn those winds and, and tide cycles. Um, he kind of opens the door to Portuguese exploration. One of the students was Vasco da Gama. He's famous for basically becoming the first European to sail from Portugal around Africa, and he made it to India. And in India, you know, he was able to access those, those goods, the silk, the spices, and he established colonies in India. Um, along the way, the Portuguese stopped in Africa, and that's where they kind of learned of the African slave trade. So the Portuguese are going to be the first to utilize those slaves. But um, they did establish um, coastal forts or garrisons that were kind of way stations or trading stations along the way. And as you can see, here's Vasco da Gama. Um, you know, he left in 1497 made it to Calcutta, India in 1498, and he was back uh, a year later. So it was about a two-year voyage around the coast of Africa. Um, Columbus, he wanted to do the same thing, but he believed you could just go across the Atlantic, and obviously he was pretty wrong. All right, so Columbus, um, you know, we're not going to spend a lot of time on Columbus, but, you know, we know about his voyage in 1492. Even though he was Italian, he did sail for Spain. And... The group of people that were really devastated by him were the Taino people, and they were living in Cuba and the Dominican Republic. And those diseases that Columbus and his men brought were, were, were just brutal. Uh, he was known to overwork the Indians. Um, there are stories of, of threatening 
or not even threatening, but basically any young boy who did not find gold, their hands were cut off, um, you know, uh, dogs were used to, uh, you know, anyone who didn't mine enough, they were fed to dogs. Young boys were, were used uh, to die for pearls, and sometimes they were drowned because of that. So, you know, Columbus, at least Columbus and his men, his, his men were just really abusive to these people. Um, and a lot of people don't realize, but as governor of Cuba, he was also jailed for just being cruel to his own colonists. So, you know, we celebrate Columbus, but sometimes I wonder why that is. All right, so another little important piece. After Columbus, Spain and, and Portugal are, um, or I shouldn't say Spain or Portugal, but the Pope divides America into two pieces, and um, the Americas. And so to the um, west of this line, uh, the territory would be Spanish. To the east of this line, territories or colonies would be Portugal. If you notice, it goes through Brazil. And if you go to Brazil today, they still speak Portuguese. So that's called the Treaty of Tordesai. And the whole purpose of it right here, I would write this down, was just to kind of avoid war and resolve disputes. So that would be the Pope establishing kind of, a, of tr establishing trade guidelines. That's the Treaty of Tordesai. You'll probably see that on the next test. All right, so, uh, you know, we're going to, the last explorer we're going to focus on is Ferdinand Magellan, and he's famous for, uh, and he didn't, he didn't really accomplish this because he was killed in the Philippines by natives, but he and his crew uh, uh, circumvaded the earth. Um, he also wanted to make it to Asia, and he believed that Columbus was on to something, but Magellan believed that um, he could do it even more quickly, so he actually circled um, around Chile and South America, and he did. He actually made it all the around, all the way around the world to prove that the, you know, that you could do that. The, the idea that the world was flat—that's uh, kind of an urban legend. European scholars were pretty, pretty confident that the world was not flat. That's kind of an urban legend. But Magellan kind of sense. Um, it's interesting that there is one more explorer that we're gonna kind of learn about, and his name was Zhang He. He was actually Chinese. And he sailed in 1405, you know, before Columbus. He was part of the Ming Dynasty, and he made seven voyages throughout his lifetime, but mostly through the, you know, the Asian region, to Arabia, Africa. And the idea was to display um, uh, power, and basically, you know, depending on where he went, uh, accumulate tribute, gold, spices along those lines, and he brought those back to China. Uh, much larger fleet. The ship he actually sailed on was massive. It would swallow uh, Columbus's ship um, completely. Um, he ends up bringing ideas and goods back to China, but it's interesting that a lot of Chinese Confucianists did not support the voyages. They were concerned that these ideas, especially other religions and other beliefs, will kind of undermine Chinese traditions. But uh, he is given credit for his, um, you know, I guess you could say he's the first, you know, really important explorer. Um, again, he's sailing before Columbus in 1405. All right, so we're going to kind of spend a couple minutes on the Columbian Exchange. So, um, you know, we talk about the effect of, of discovery. So, you know, there was an exchange of goods. So when Europeans would travel to the Americas, they would bring goods like olives and onions and coffee and certain grains like wheat and rice, also cattle. Um, and disease, unfortunately. Um, the Americas would also provide goods, and these goods would make their way to Europe. So this is called the Columbian Exchange. It's the exchange of, of products, um, labor and disease. Don't forget, African slaves were also brought to the Americas, so we do include um, African people. Um, cattle was obviously utilized um, for meat, um, wheat for bread and horses. Horses were very important. They were brought over by the Spanish and they helped nomadic native groups hunt and travel. So remember that. That'll also be on the test. And we know that um, rats carried fleas and disease and the mosquitoes um, you know, also contained disease that could be spread from one person to another. Um, you know, there was a lot of stress on the environment um, especially with cattle, right, or a horse. 
um, eating grass. So the habitats of the Americas were changed forever because of this. Um, from the Americas, we're going to see potatoes and tomatoes, tobacco for cigarettes and pipes, and corn. Um, the Europeans did come down with STDs from native peoples, but STDs were not as deadly, obviously, as the measles at the time. Um, and, and this actually had a, well, these goods had a positive impact on Europe. Um, you know, Europeans started to live a little bit longer. Their diets were a little healthier, fruits and vegetables. So we do kind of mention the positive effect on the Colombian exchange. Um, let's not forget about Africa. Africa was also involved. From Africa to America, we know about African slavery, mostly for sugar plantations in Cuba and the Dominican Republic, also the Portuguese. The Portuguese were the first European country to enslave Africans, and those Africans were brought to Brazil. Uh, sometimes they would also um, you know, cultivate rice. Um, from America to Africa, um, the good that was exchanged was, was sugar. The goods were sugar or tobacco. Um, so let's always remember that the African people were also involved in this exchange. So the effects. Population growth in Europe increased quite a bit because of the healthier diets. And the, Amer the, Amer the Amerindian population, just another word of saying Native American, that population decreased, right? The demographics changed quite a bit. We did see an absorption of cultures. Um, we'll kind of talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the Spanish were actually, um, they were accepting of natives in a sense. Um, and we'll kind of talk about some things that they picked up on. But intermarriage was acceptable. Um, that wasn't the case for the English. The English wanted nothing to do with native people. Um, but in, 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 you know, the African peoples, they were also affected. Obviously, some of their strongest, youngest people were taken away from them. And the guns that were brought over from the Europeans were used in civil war. Um, populations didn't decrease too much, but you did see more chaos um, and, I guess you could say, civil war, right? Uh, wars between different groups. All right, so the economic changes. Um, the age of discovery introduced new labor systems, obviously African slavery systems, but also a system called the encomienda system. Natives were initially used as slaves. They worked for food and shelter. Um, the only catch was that the Pope did require that the Spanish treat these natives well, which didn't happen, but in theory that was supposed to happen. So that's called the encomienda system. It's the enslavement of native peoples. Uh, what were they used for? Uh, silver mines in Peru. Um, and silver was what really helped the economy of the Spanish. They brought back silver, and that silver was very um, uh, popular. Um, so it was uh, it would be used as a, as a means of exchange, uh, used to purchase products. So, you know, the Spanish became, a, Spain became a very, very wealthy nation. All right, so um, after Magellan and Columbus, in the early 1500s, we saw the emergence of conquistadors. Not really explorers, but conquerors. And the most famous conquerors were Hernan Cortez and Francisco Pizarro. Uh, Cortez used disease and alliances with local tribes to, to wipe out one of the greatest civilizations in the history of the world, the Aztecs. And Francisco Pizarro was is best now, known for wiping out the Incas in 1532. Uh, their leader was Atahualpa, and um, kind of an interesting story. We're probably not going to get to it, but um, he was uh, uh, killed. And uh, here, disease was more of a factor than uh, military force. All right, so what are some of the changes culturally? Uh, natives obviously saw a loss of their culture. Um, just their oral and their written history uh, disappeared, you know, as more and more natives died. Obviously, the oral history would not be passed down. And any written history was destroyed when Cortez would burn uh, Inca books. Uh, we don't have a lot of written artifacts. Uh, they were mostly destroyed. But we do understand a lot about these civilizations from priests and the, conquistador, the conquistadors themselves. But we do have to be careful of bias. Um, but we will learn of one piece pretty upfront and honest about the treatment of natives. 
Uh, syncretism was very common. It's just another word for absorbing or assimilating. Uh, the Spanish and Portuguese language and Catholicism was adopted by the native people, um, usually by force, unfortunately. However, the indigenous languages do remain in, in countries like Guatemala. Uh, natives adopted Christianity, but they did maintain some of their polyistic beliefs and traditions. Um, the Spanish uh, learned from uh, learned farming and better irrigation systems from the native people. And even they absorbed some Indian practices or religious practices. So uh, the Day of the Dead was continued to be practiced. Um, it's just known as All Saints Day. Um, it's kind of a native worshiping day, but we still see that um, worshipped um, in, in Mexico, which is predominantly Catholic. All right, socially we see a, a social class system emerge in the Americas. Uh, at the top would be those Spanish who were born in Spain, the Spain, the Peninsulares. In the middle, you'd have you'd have Europeans who were born in America, but they were strictly you know pure blooded um, Europeans. They were Creoles, and then you had the Castas or the mixed race groups. You have the Mestizos, the Spanish and American Indian populations, the Mulattoes, African and Spanish populations, and Zambos, African and Indian populations. So again, the Spanish were were. You know, um, they were okay with absorption or assimilation. The English were not. We don't see these mixed races in the English colonies later on. And it's during this time where we see the development of kind of a defined social status um, based on your ethnicity or your race. And... This is where that I this is really where we see the first examples of racism, where people of color were kind of seen in inferior lights. Uh, they were marginalized, they were stereotyped, and mostly they were put into that lower class because of the color of their skin. Even if they did, you know, mix with Europeans, as you can see, they were still on the bottom rung of the American social ladder. All right, that's it. So if you have to go back, take those notes.